Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, specifically, what's up, Gaston County? Scotty Reed here for Gaston County Community Talk, which is a network, new network media outlet that's being built, the grassroots media outlet that's being built, uh, constructed, whatever word you choose to use here in Gaston County, just to focus on local issues to have people better inform and just talk about whatever and i guess you know since there will be more enough at least one other host that will be coming aboard later to host their own show um i guess we'll call the one that i host we'll just call that one tell it like it is you know not to be all cliche but hey if the description fits wear it so welcome to the first episode of Tell It Like It Is. And on this, I wanna talk about a post, this first episode. I wanna talk about this post. Y'all let me uh, turn down my music so you could probably hear me more clearly, but I wanna talk about the swearing in of US Representative Jeff Jackson, which I attended as a member of the media for Gaston County. Uh, community talk, which I should point out is a localized media project, which is a part of the Black Talk Media Project's overall outreach and part of its mission. And so it is a Black Talk Media Project, the nonprofit North Carolina based a new media organization that is underwriting uh, everything. So we, Black Talk Media Project, we got Black History Month coming up. And so um, those of you who follow me personally know I'm an artist, um, NFT artist, um, digital artist. But foremost, I'm an abolitionist for those that don't know, you know me or follow me and re read my bio. But yeah, I'm an abolitionist, uh, number one. And we'll definitely be talking about the issue of abolition. And in case there's any confusion, um, we'll be talking about slavery abolition, okay? Slavery abolition on telling it like it is. And we'll talk about the North Carolina Constitution and what does it mean to the institution of slavery because a lot of people have been miseducated to believe that slavery was abolished. And um, yeah, so I know some of you may have heard the stories about the recent states who actually changed their constitutions to actually abolish slavery so the united states has never abolished slavery but i came i wanted to talk about a post i made i attended as a part of the media uh, the swearing in ceremony it wasn't the actual swearing in that happened in washington dc uh in congress but um just for the constituents who live in the brand new 14th district which is part of uh, South Mecklenburg and um, uh, Eastern Gaston County, and it's the majority of Gaston County, but it also includes Gastonia, um, which is uh, its largest city uh, here in Gaston County. Um, and so he had swearing in ceremonies, and uh, Jeff Jackson, that is, had swearing in ceremonies both at, at Gaston County. Uh, that one was on noon at, on January the 20th. And then um, another one later that evening, 6 o'clock p.m. in Mecklenburg County. And I thought that was kind of smart, kind of cool, you know, to uh, open up something to the public to participate in that. And But what my blog post focused on, though, was the disappointment, okay? Um, I was there as the media. I'm not the only black media in the area, but I was the only one. Uh, who covered the event. I think WBTV had a camera person out there. Um, she was the only one I've seen. It might have been some writers, those who still work in print uh, there, but um, my camera and WBTV uh, camera were the only ones there. So, um, but anyway, so I just took mental note of things that happened there, you know, who was in the room, um, looking to see faces that I might be familiar with and gauge the overall atmosphere and how these people feel about this new um, representative, who is a Democrat, by the way, in Gaston County, has not had Democratic representation in decades. And I'm going to say decades because someone told me it might have been 40 years since a Democrat, you know, um, 
um, represented, represented uh, this county, which has, you know, not a real large African-American population, but was sizable enough. Um, we could look, we're not going to get into the statistics, but anyway, um, you do have a concentration of African Americans in Gastonia, and then you have a concentration of African Americans in South Mecklenburg as well. And that might explain why, in some people say 40 years, it's been 40 years since a Democrat was elected because it's been all straight Republicans, uh, Gaston County, solidly um, red county. You know, all, all, basically, almost all the county officials are. Republicans. Um, and then, you know, the city of Gastonia, it has a mayor, but um, which is a good segue. He's African-American, uh, Mayor Reed. Um, and but he wasn't there, which is a good segue into why I was disappointed, why I was disappointed that I was one of only maybe three or four black men in the room, maybe two black women. But those people were there as uh, members of the Democratic Party. I think the, the senior Democrats of Gaston County, they might have been part part of that. But the so-called black leadership, you know, if if there such a thing exists, um, you know, which is. I thought about this term and it's been brought up before. It's probably why it's on my mind. Um, leading blacks versus black leaders and do black people really have any leaders anybody that's looking out um, for their interests looking out for their um, constitutional rights their civil rights um, you know their guaranteed rights as citizens um, so do we have have that in Gaston County and I have to say um, no I have to say we don't and we're supposed to have a NAACP. Check that out right there. Y'all see that? Let me see. All right. Friend of mine printed out the entire bylaws. I've been going through it. She's been going through it. And you might as well say the NAACP only exists in Gaston County on paper. And I can go on into details, um, which I will a little later. But first, let me just read, bear with me, let me read this blog post that I made the day after because um, I was processing my video um, still and I grabbed a still from it, uh, meaning a, a screenshot from the video and just what I thought, you know, put my thoughts down. And so this this is what I um, I wrote. This is what I was feeling. Um, as I continue to process this video from the interviews I did at the swearing in of U.S. Representative Jeff Jackson, I was sorely disappointed to be one of seemingly only two black men in the room, and one was a college buddy of Representative Jackson. Maybe I missed someone, but okay, three. Um, he was there to be a featured speaker sharing thoughts about Representative uh, Jackson's journey in life and I was there to cover it for the local media project my organization has been trying to establish in my county there was not a single black elected leader or NGO leader NGO just simply means non-governmental organization that would be something like you know the NAACP now you could say that um, the, the so-called president of the NAACP here, Chris Thomason, um, has a conflict of interest because he's also a, a member of the Democratic Party and is holds an elected, uh, not elected, but probably a appointed position. And, um, you know, just very, you might as well, again, as I stated, NAACP don't exist in, in Gaston County. Um, but I, let me go on. I, um, there was not a single black elected leader or NGO leader in the room. And we have several, several black led organizations. That's, you know, some of them formal organizations, you know, like the Black Talk Media Project, meaning that, you know, they are, are documented with the state as a nonprofit organizations or however else they're set up but you know supposed to be helping the people you know doing that kind of stuff um none of them were there um i took a mental note of all of that 
and there was not even a single so-called black business leader, but maybe they didn't want to be seen at the ceremony for a Democrat. And so let me explain further what I mean by that, because there is one person who other people put her out there as a black leader. Um, she assumed the mantle as a black leader at a rally that, you know, we both were speaking out, uh, speaking at Featured Speakers Act, a Stop the Violence uh, rally that occurred on the pavilion in Gastonia. I think that was in 20, um, 2020, um, maybe. And, and so, but I know that her business is successful because of her customers and who are our biggest paying customers for the business she in. And that is these neo-confederates. Everybody know in Gaston County who I'm talking about when I say neo-confederates. If you support that neo-confederate statue sitting in front of the building where a U.S. representative was sworn in, although again, it wasn't the official one. It was just, uh, it was a ceremonial ceremony. And, you know, and we got that thing, you know, sitting out there, memorial to insurrectionists, you know, and this is in light of January the 6th. And, you know, this is this woman's biggest clientele. That's, you know, okay, now I get it. I get it. All right. You don't, you don't want politics to mess up your money. Then why say anything at all? You know, because this person also stated that when everyone uh, black, white, Latino, Asian, Polynesian, African American, everybody, you know, was out there straight, gay, trans, was out there against that statue. Uh, I could safely say a majority of the people who turned out were against that relic, that that monument to white supremacy. And we ain't even going to go down that road of debating history or race in history because all you got to do is move it, put it in the museum, offer to take it, and hopefully put it in the proper context. So that's what a neo-confederate is, you know? That's what you are. And we saw the uh, so-called rebel flag um, being paraded through the halls of Congress during the January 6th insurrection. People scaling the walls, waving the flag like they done did something you know yeah they committed an act of terrorism an act of, of insurrection you know really you read throughout history people have been executed for such things john brown you know when he uh attacked harper's fair ferry hoping to spark a uh, armed rebellion um of the enslaved versus the slavers and you know of course that failed and what was he he was executed as a traitor but yet traitors who were for slavery got monuments in Gaston County. All right. So, oh, I don't want to go down that road, go down that road right now. But, hey, that's where my mind went. But anyway, I was just talking about this business person. Yeah, this business person called it, oh, don't worry about it. Let it stand. It's just a pile of bricks. No, it's symbolism. It was put there generations ago for a reason. We know the keynote speech, okay, um, and and did not want to recognize uh, African Americans, former victims of slavery, enslaved Africans. Um, you know, didn't want them to have the right to vote, even after they fought on the battlefield to save the United States of America from y'all treasonous traitors. Oh wow! So I don't, anyway, now. She had to say that. When you speak out against your your people, then, and I ain't talking about when somebody's saying something wrong, but where is the wrong in removing a symbol of white supremacy? And then to put it through the democratic process that it went through and to gain the support that it got to get a vote to actually remove it, but now there's a lawsuit. And this is what, why it's on my mind about these leading blacks who didn't, well, before I jump ahead to that, I felt like attending there, I would have attended if not as part of the media, as a leader of Black Talk Media Project, okay, as a person who organized, who helped organize marches and rallies, successful marches and rallies around the corner in towns that had never been marched in before, you know. 
uh, with an uh, integrate, uh, um, uh, integrated crowd of supporters. So when you're networking with people, you got to go to certain things. And, you know, in the people activity of politics, um, to change laws for to make things better, specifically for black people, uh, uh, if you are a black leader, but in general, that's good for everyone. But if you're a leader, you have to go to these type of events, these swearing in ceremonies. And then also you have to be an example to the voters or would be voters if you knew how to engage them again, especially if you elected representative. And I found out about this late. So um, it's just the state of politics is pitiful in Gaston County. And in general, of course, we know a lot of them are, are Trumpian treasonous and, and what have you. I'm talking about elected officials, especially on the county board. Um, but you still have to go to these things, whether it is to voice your opposition to whatever's being proposed on the county level, like ordinances, which are in fact laws, that only apply for that specific area of the county, so to speak, county property or whatever. Y'all know we went through that whole democratic process and came out winners on it, you know, um, that most people would agree was was a reasonable compromise for them. Um, but they shouldn't have been trying to restrict free speech in the first place. But you still have to network. You have to call people. You have to email people. And no, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, but you also had to show up to public events. You know, there was a, a, a maybe about 20 Gaston County students um, who were there, Gaston College students, I should say, which is in Gaston County in Dallas uh, specifically. Um, there were about maybe five or six of them that were um, African-American uh, people of color, you know, there were some Asian people there, uh, students as well. And they didn't, you know what I'm saying? And then for those African-American students to come in there, um, obviously taking some kind of class that's connected to politics or government in a way, and then they don't see no black men or women leadership in the room to go up and ask questions to and whatnot. So I was just very disappointed. I, I didn't even read the rest of um what i wrote um I, I, let me pick up what i wrote while i was part of the media that day i'm planning to get a meeting with representative jackson to press him to support the slavery abolition legislation in the u.s congress and maybe you don't know because your media um favorite channels didn't tell you that it, or you missed the episode where they were talking about or segment where they were talking about the legislation in the u.s congress to abolish slavery by abolishing the 13th amendment again uh, people have been so poorly educated and then the media speaking of the power of the media who have supported the lie that um Slavery to inst as an institution was abolished in the United States at the conclusion of the Civil War. No Lincoln can promise with them racists. And he was a racist too. We could talk about that history. Um, but, you know, he made a compromise and he allowed them to prey on black people and put them back into slavery by convicting them of crimes. And then there you go, what's known as Jim Crow. Okay. So, anyway. Slavery's never been abolished, and I want to talk to my quote unquote representative, and I did vote for the man. Um, but you know, maybe he doesn't know much about it. I do know a person that volunteered, I think, maybe donated money to his campaign, sent him information. Um, I introduced them to abolition, and I could call them an abolitionist. Uh, Miss Pamela Morgan Stern, and she told me, I don't think she mind me sharing this publicly, sent it to him, abolitionist material. I think it was something from the San Francisco Bay View. Um, and it was an article, um, and that's an African-American paper. I had shared it, and she sent that to him, and it talked about um, um, slavery in California. And um, 
paying prisoners, you know, at least a minimum wage so they could send money home to support their children and not be slaves. You know what I'm saying? Fighting California um, fires, you know, and now the media is glorifying um, slave labor fighting forest fires in California and people losing their lives. These are victims of modern day slavery. So I want to talk to Representative Jackson about that. Um, now, but I, I went on the right, I just kind of got this lyric in my head. I am a writer and it was, it basically goes like this. People complaining about the game and they sitting in the stands, but still talking lame, sitting around waiting, not elevating and rising to the occasion to engage in trailblazing, shaking my head. Cause where, where are these trailblazers? So Again, you know, for those who have followed follow me or know me in Gaston County, y'all know I got arrested um, for refusing to move off a sidewalk, uh, for picketing and parading, right? Um, long story short, those charges got dismissed. But the reason I, I refuse to move off that sidewalk is because Gaston County Sheriff's Department was trying to force black activists who were out there for Jason Liscom to raise awareness about his killing by possibly Gaston Sheriff's deputies, but um, uh, Gastonia City Police were the officials on the call and, and the sheriffs was assisting them, which might have been illegal. I still don't know the details on all of that, but they was telling them, no, they, they can't protest there. And mind you, it was written in a, a Gaston Gazette, which I had already known about, um, when people were out there protesting on behalf of Caucasian American uh, Joshua War, um, his arrest and and by Gastonia City Police, and they was asking for the camera body cam footage to be released. Oh, they was you know basically uh, giving the red red carpet, you know. But we have fought for their right to do that and won that because the ordinance was unless you have a group of, of more than 24 or 25 people you don't have to let the sheriff's department know nothing and that is a designated space that sidewalk because they don't even control that sidewalk and then the sheriff's department uh the sidewalk is city property so i don't want to get into the legal minutia and all that but y'all know where i'm going right i hope you know where i'm going so anyway while these black people are being chased off their rights, their constitutional rights as, as U.S. citizens being violated, um, their constitutional rights as North Carolina citizens, not just U.S. citizens. Uh, North Carolina Constitution is very strong on First Amendment speech rights. But anyway, y'all ever hear anything from the NAACP? Huh? Did, did Chris Thomason, did he even write a letter to the editor and say, oh, uh, this is outrageous that black people is being treated this way in the county? You know, it was front page news, you know, in the Gaston Gazette. So, you know, oh, but guess who, guess who got attached to the lawsuit suing the county to force them to do what they said they was going to do, Chris Thomason. But when I called him, Five years before uh, George Floyd got killed and, and, and said something to him about that statue, how it made me feel not only as a black person, but as a U.S. veteran, a uh, 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 combat veteran at that. How that statue, you know, it don't belong here. Oh, we got more important things to do. But because I'm seen as the quote unquote angry black man telling it like it is. You know, um, I don't get included in, in the lawsuit. I don't get named as a plaintiff. Even though, you know, I, and it wasn't even about me. It could have been my daughter. It could have been Jamal Gillespie. It could have, but, you know, uh, um, I understand how the courts work. You want to get the least controversial if it go before a jury or whatever or for a judge. You're looking for the perfect candidate. I know y'all picked him because he got that title in AACP president, but he does nothing. And, and here's the bylaws. Didn't even say nothing. Ain't call nobody. Ain't, ain't sought to reach out to nobody. And uh, their bylaws all the, don't even got a website. They're not doing so. We don't have any representation. And I'm here 
to tell it like it is. So this has been the first installment of Tell It Like It Is on Gaston County Community Talk. Um, hopefully soon we'll be working out of a new studio where we'll be bringing on um, guests, whether they be uh, elected officials, um, NGO leaders, whatever. I hope they'll come talk to me about the issues in Gaston County. All right. With that said, peace and blessings to all. Like, share, subscribe.